Hello everyone, this is Fredrik Eklind from Nordic Legacy Studios and today in this video I will show you some basic camera works using the point and click toolkit but uh, these uh, camera techniques can also be used in a regular Unreal project so when we press play we want a cutscene to play like so and when the cutscene has played, we want it to return back to this original starting camera. And when we walk to the tunnel, we want it to switch to a close-up view. And we want it to return back to a overview view when we exit the tunnels. So to start with, if you're using the PNC toolkit, you will need a scene manager in the scene. Uh, and you will need the advanced camera which I have named starting camera here and you will need the PNC 3D character player here and you will also need a nav mesh if you want your character to be able to move um, so that's about it you don't need this tunnel if you don't want you can use something else maybe you have your own level you want to achieve something So I will first replicate this starting camera to make one for the close-up. I will control C and control V. We'll move this here. I will change the spring arm uh, a little bit closer. And then I will rotate the camera like this. I will rename it close-up camera and I will also uncheck the scene starting camera because we don't want two scene starting camera we want one and that's the starting camera and then I will replicate the starting camera again and I will name this one camera 2 and I will put this over here So we will get this view when we exit the tunnel. And I will also uncheck the scene starting camera here. So now we have three cameras and we will also need one, a cinematic one. But that one will wait for now. So at first we will go into the scene manager. And in here we will first create a few variables. The first one will be called starting camera. You will need to search for it here. BP advanced camera is the one we're using. And it's also important to make it public here. And then we will replicate this one. And this one will called uh, we will call it close-up camera and the third one we will call camera 2 like so and now if you go to the scene manager you can see these values here this is the one which we just made and the starting camera should be the one you want to use as a starting camera, which is this one. Uh, the close-up camera should ob obviously be the close-up camera, and the camera 2, the camera 2. Uh, and then we will return here, and we will add some trigger boxes, because in this tutorial I'm using trigger boxes to trigger my cameras. There is also a built-in system for triggering cameras, but uh, I had found that those triggers didn't work as I intended because I get some I thought it was hard to switch between cameras using that system so I prefer to use this system with box collisions uh, I will call this one trigger box 1 I will replicate it and call it trigger box 2 and the trigger box 3 
and now we have our three boxes. So I will right click and add event on the trigger box, begin overlap, and do the same for box two and three. And here we want to choose which actor we want to affect. So I will go for an equal. And we want to affect, if you want to do as I'm doing now, you want to affect the PNC character. So I will search for that one, get PNC character, and then a branch to connect it. So when the PNC character goes into the box, it will turn to true. I will replicate it. Like so. So in this first trigger box, uh, we want to first put them up at the right place. So the first one I want to play in the beginning, just in front of the character. And the second one I want to activate when I'm close to the tunnel. And the third one I want to activate when we exit the tunnel. Like so. And now with our first trigger box here, this is the one that we want to activate our cutscene, which we haven't made yet. So we're going to do that. We will right click here in the content browser and we'll go for cinematic and we will make a level sequence and call it cinematic sequence. We will double click it. And here we will create a camera create a new camera and set this as a current camera cut. So here is our cinematic camera actor. And here you have some values you can change. You can change the focal length, the aperture, and you can crop it. There's a bunch of stuff you can do here with your camera. Uh, I will change this to maybe 25. It's just for my taste, Not you don't actually have to change anything here. Um, and then I will go down here on this list to the transform tab. And I will see that I have this slider all the way to the left here, just where the gray area starts or ends. I want my cinematic camera to start here, so I will add a new key at the current time and then I will move the slider maybe here and I will move the camera into the tunnel and I will press a new key and I will go a little further and another key and at the end I will put it all the way up the ramp into the gigantic bowling bowl which I made. Now we can see how the camera will play. I press the spacebar and the camera is playing. And to make this camera activate uh, using the triggers uh, it's also a good idea to lock this so you don't accidentally change the values here when you are messing around with your other cameras. Uh, we will return to our scene manager and in the scene manager uh, we want it to activate on the on component begin overlap trigger box one so drag from true and use create sequence level sequence player I will split struck screen on the settings I will search for here is our cinematic sequence so if it's not visible here, you have done something wrong. Uh, we will 
play it. Search for play. So there are a bunch of ways you can do this. Uh, but I will go with assign on finished. And then we will get an event here. On finished event. I will also unbind this event so it doesn't play again accidentally. So the thing that will happen here is we create a level sequence player. It will play and when it's finished we will go here to this custom event and then we want it to return back to the original camera. Which we can do when we use set view target with blend. If this doesn't show up for you, you can unbox this context sensitive. Um, so if it doesn't appear for you. So set the view target and what camera do we want to activate? We want to return to our starting camera. So we will drag out the one we made here, put it in the new view target. And as a target, we will use the player controller. Like so. Maybe you want a blend time so it doesn't just switch directly. Maybe 1.5 is a good value to start with. So let's see now if this works as intended. We will go and press play. We see our character, we move forward and it plays as we wanted. So let's see again as it so it's you can see that it returns back to the original starting camera, which was what we wanted to achieve. And you also see here that the camera replays every time when I move here, uh, which is, I don't think that's a good thing if you want to make a cutscene, because uh, obviously a cutscene you want to only play once. Uh, so there are multiple ways to achieve this, depending on what setting you're using. Uh, maybe you want to cutscene to play maybe every time you enter the scene, and only once in the scene, or maybe you want the sequence player to only play once ever. Um, so let's say you save the game and quit and then you return, you don't want the uh, cutscene to play again. And one way to achieve that uh, using this point and click toolkit is to create a branch and then drag out Add a container contains under the array utilities and drag out get scene state. Like so. We'll plug this in here uh, and into the false. So let's call this cutscene has played. So when the cutscene has played, we want it to return to true, which means this sequence play shouldn't play again. Um, and to tell this container that it has played, we will have to add the string at the end here. Add state string to scene. Like so. So this one will add the state string and uh, we don't need the scene name because we're only using one scene. But if you had another scene you want to be affected by this string, you will have to name that scene name here. Um, we will add the print string. Cutscene has played. So we know that this works as intended. We will test it, play, 
Our character moves to the cutscene, it plays. Uh, and you also saw another thing here, that when the cutscene played, our character moved, which is... Maybe that's something you don't want to happen. Uh, so to change that, I will go to the scene manager. So when the cutscene is playing... We want to add a PNC controller, get PNC player controller. And you can use a basic thing here, which is integrated into the toolkit, which is called set input profile. And here I will put cutscene. And we will also, to be safe that our character doesn't move, we will also disable his movement temporarily, like this. And when the cutscene has played, we want it to return back to gameplay. And here we want to add movement mode. Set moment mode. And here we want to have walking because our character should walk again. So we test this and see if it works. It turns to cutscene. I cannot move my character. And it returns back as intended. Another character is still at the same place, which is when he started the cutscene. And with our other cameras, uh, we want to activate them as well. So we have our second trigger here. We will copy the set view target with blend twice. And the first one should be the close up camera. We add it to the new view target. And the second one should be camera two. We will test this. So first, the cutscene. Then the close-up camera. And the overview again. So there you have it. Some basic camera works with the point-and-click toolkit. Uh, in my next tutorial, I will thinking about making um, a Smithy tutorial for a mini game. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, you can add some comments below. Or maybe you have some other ideas of some, maybe something for the point and click toolkit or something else entirely that you are trying to achieve but you don't know how to do it. I will do my best to make a tutorial about that. So have a good one and see you later.